Coming up next on Valley News Live at 10, Grand Forks business owners wondering how to enforce their mask rules as the city's mandate is lifted. Local hospitals address how pharmacies seem to be offering the COVID vaccines faster. Plus, scammers targeting the vaccines, vaccination cards, even negative COVID tests. We'll show you where they're all being sold. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 10. A big day in Grand Forks County as its mask mandate is no more. City leaders say COVID numbers are down and vaccination rates are going up. But as Valley News Team's Erin Walling found out, some people are split on whether the move is too much too soon. I think it's completely disrespectful to people who are immunocompromised and elderly. Manya Chattaverdi is a student at the University of North Dakota. While some in Grand Forks County are rejoicing today about the mask mandate being lifted, she is one of many voicing concern. Personally, I would really want to enforce the mask mandate. I work at a grocery store uh, and I've seen a lot of people, even if they don't want to wear a mask, pull one out to go out shopping. And I, I think that it is um, extremely um, important that we keep a mask mandate here because if we don't, uh, I have a feeling that the cases are going to shoot uh, right back up again. County Health Official Dr. Joel Walls made the decision to lift the mandate, saying lifting the mask mandate removes the enforcement mechanism, but in no way diminishes the usefulness of masking as an additional tool to mitigate COVID-19. Grand Forks Mayor Brandon Bochensky also commented on the decision, saying it is important to respect the right of businesses to their own masking policies moving forward. One downtown business owner is now wondering if she can enforce her mask rules at all. There's a lot of people right now who don't wear masks anyway. And does it also mean that I cannot impose a mask mandate in my own business? I'm curious about that. That's not been made clear. At work myself, I will continue to wear a mask no matter what for the next several months even. In Grand Forks, Aaron Walling, Valley News Live. Tomorrow we'll hear from Tom Ford, the Director of Administration for Grand Forks County, on what this decision means for other areas in the county. The number of COVID-19 vaccine doses coming to North Dakota is growing and the number of people eligible is too. Thrifty White and Grand Forks Public Health opened up uh, appointments to those in Category 1C today with Fargo Cass Public Health following closely behind. But what about the local hospitals? Both Sanford and Essentia say they aren't holding vaccine back. Rather, there are just a lot of people to give it to. In that phase 1B alone for Ascension in North Dakota, we had over 10,000 patients. So that's a lot for us to try to vaccinate when we're only receiving vaccine once every three weeks. Because we don't want to invite more people than we have doses for. And in this case, more supply may also mean more demand. With the Johnson & Johnson one-dose vaccine now in the Valley, Sanford's senior nursing director tells us the amount of people wanting the vaccine is even larger. It's the one dose, and that's what a lot of people have been waiting for, is that one dose vaccine. Um, this week is our first week of being able to use the Janssen vaccine. The good news, both Sanford and Essentia say their allocations should nearly triple starting next week, adding they are hopeful everyone in North Dakota will have been given the opportunity to get vaccinated by the end of May. Phase 1C includes an estimated 165,000 people across North Dakota. If you're not sure which phase you're in, visit our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. We've posted the full list of who qualifies. You can also visit our website or scan the QR code on your screen to interact with our VNL vaccine tracker and stay on top of the latest COVID vaccine-related information. We are going to wake up to some terrific temperatures uh, uh, on your Tuesday, but as Hutch tells us, we should enjoy it while it lasts. He joins us now with a first look. Hey, Hutch. Indeed, that is the case, Andrea. As we head into the middle of our work week, we have some changes coming, but today we saw records tumble and it wasn't even pretty in Grand Forks. Notice the record high there in the 40s, and today we almost beat that by, well, we did beat it by 11 degrees. That's unheard of. 59 the uh, high temperature today in Grand Forks, 57 in Fargo. Records will tumble again tomorrow in many locations. Here's a look at your hometown temperatures and the peaks we saw today, mid-50s in Minnesota, 
near 60 to the west. A more active storm track is in the offing as we go through the next uh, week or so and into the following uh, week after that as we'll have a few chances of rain and snow. First alert weather day on Wednesday. I'll have hour by hour details on what you can expect here in a couple of moments. All right, thanks Hutch. Self-administered COVID tests are becoming mandatory at 11 more Canadian border crossings. Travelers to Canada are already required to have a negative COVID test taken 72 hours before their trips. Now they also have to take two more tests. The first test is at the border, supervised by health staff. The second one will be on day 10 of the mandatory two-week quarantine. If you've had the COVID vaccine, the CDC says stay put. Today they said they're still recommending against travel. However, the agency now says fully vaccinated people can visit with other fully vaccinated people without wearing masks or physical distancing. If you are vaccinated, you also don't need to quarantine after a known exposure as long as you don't have symptoms. At this time, the CDC is not adjusting current guidance on travel. Everyone, whether vaccinated or not, should continue to avoid medium and large size gatherings as well as non-essential travel. The airline industry has issues with the latest guidelines. Airlines for America, an industry group, says mask wearing makes it less likely passengers will get infected. A source with the airline industry says the CDC should publicly release the criteria used to make adjustments to travel guidelines. As Minnesotans wait their turn for the vaccine, health officials want you to know about another option for treating people who test positive. An antibody treatment has been available in Minnesota since November. As Kate Raditz reports, the antibodies are made in a lab, then infused in COVID patients to try to reduce the amount of the virus in the body. After Kelly and her family received positive COVID tests in February, she immediately set up an appointment for herself for monoclonal antibody treatment that she heard about through work. She's higher risk for severe COVID. I was nervous because I'm on an immunocompromising medication, so I was definitely worried that it could have led to more severe symptoms. This United Health Group site in Minnetonka treats patients via IV infusion. The appointments are one hour for the infusion and an hour for monitoring. What do we know about this type of antibody treatment? Probably a 70 to 80 percent reduction in progressing at all. You basically within a day or two are all better. But that outcome, Dr. Griffin says, depends on timing with the optimal results for COVID patients who receive the treatment within the first week of illness. Kelly was feeling better less than two days after her appointment. I really do feel that the antibody treatment lessened my symptoms, helped me recover more quickly. The monoclonal antibody treatment is the same type that former President Trump used when he was diagnosed with COVID, but it's available here to the public for COVID patients who are at higher risk for severe illness. A lot of people don't know um, that there is this um, incredibly effective therapy out there. The Minnesota Department of Health says these treatments are available at several health care providers in Minnesota. The federal government covers the cost of the therapy drug. However, there could be a cost to you based on the provider and your insurance. President Biden is set to make his first primetime address this week. The White House press secretary announced today that the president will speak to the nation on Thursday night to commemorate the one year anniversary of the COVID-19 shutdown. Still ahead tonight, the latest item on the dark web is not only a COVID vaccination card, but also a COVID vaccine. We'll look at the shocking items up for sale. But first, another beautiful day in store tomorrow. But then we're in for a bit of a roller coaster ride. Hutch is in next when Valley News Live at 10 continues.